Hi, welcome to this edition of Digital Discoveries. We're in the middle of a conversation called the SAMR model, and I want to welcome everybody back. I hope you're able to see our first episode, which gave kind of an overview of what the SAMR model was. Uh, today, we're going to look at the S of the SAMR model, which is substitution. Remember from our previous uh, uh, episode, uh, SAMRs, S stands for substitution, A augmentation, M modification, and R redefinition. And this is a way of looking at how teachers can integrate technology into a classroom. Sometimes we look at uh, technology and we think, well, you know, what can we do uh, with our technology? We've got all this equipment, what can we do with it? And so this model, the SAMR model, actually gives us a pretty good idea of how we, uh, of the level of integration in technology now. Most people, when they use technology, are at that S level, and that's perfectly acceptable. That's a, that's a good way to introduce students to our technology. What we wanna do is move toward the R and the M, the modification, the redefinition, but today, we're gonna talk just about substitution to give you kind of an idea of what substitution is. Remember that in our SAMR model, those two levels at the bottom, sub substitution and augmentation, those two are enhancing lessons. So the, they're not really transforming the lesson yet, so we're gonna substitute and augment with technology. We're not quite up to that transformation part where technology takes that off. And so let's talk a little bit about substitution. What is substitution? What does that mean? Well, if you remember from our first episode when we talked about substitution, what substitution meant was we take something with technology and we use it to do exactly what we previously had been doing with no, no technology. So we're taking an analog lesson, for instance, and we're making it a digital lesson. So let's, let's look at some examples. And when we start looking at this, remember that substitution Technology acts just like the old tool. It's doing exactly what the old tool would do. So I've got this guy looking at us. <laughs> I love this. I love this uh, picture of this guy. And so uh, we're going to look at some examples with, uh, with our guy here. So I found, uh, uh, as I was walking around some of our uh, campuses, I saw this uh, particular lesson hanging on a wall. And uh, when I looked at this lesson, I thought, well, what is this exactly? Well, I think this was a second grade, first or second grade, maybe third grade, and uh, the student uh, re read a book called Diary of a Wimpy Kid, um, and what they had to do was, I think they had to write a paragraph or two about Diary of a Wimpy Kid. So you can see in this assignment what the kids did was, at the top they had to, I think, make their own book cover, uh, so that's what the top part of it was, so they drew their own book cover. Then down at the bottom, they had to write their assignment. Now, typically, what a student would do is in this assignment is that they would draw the top part, they'd draw that book cover, and then down at the bottom, they would write out their paragraph. They would actually write out with pen and paper, or pencil and paper, and they would post it to this, and they'd, they'd uh, turn that in. In this assignment, what the teacher had them do was, in, as you can see, instead of writing with pen and paper, what the teacher had them do was she had them type up the exact same thing that they would have written in pen and paper. So this is a really good example of the substitution model. They just did the exact same assignment, but they substituted using a word processor for, um, for handwriting it. So this is an example of the S in our SAMR model. This is, a, this is a really good substitution. They didn't do anything different with this lesson. They didn't have the kids add anything to it that they normally wouldn't do. The teacher just had the student take the, what was the original assignment, write out a paragraph, and instead of writing it out, they typed it out. So, so that's a really good example where technology just acts like the old tool. Technology is just doing what we would have done in the past, that's substitution. So let's look at another one here. This is, uh, this is one that, um, where students uh, make a bubble map or a mind map. And um, in this case, what they did was they read the book Stella Luna. And so that's what's right there in the center. It's kind of hard to read, but they wrote the, read the book Stella Luna, and I think what they had to do was they had to give some uh, uh, adjectives uh, to describe Stella Luna. And if uh, everybody remembers what Stella Luna was, it's a story about a bat. And so 
you can see back here on this that the Stella Luna, she, uh, the, the student uh, and in each one of those uh, bubbles would fill in kind of some description of what Stella Luna was. Well, she can see in the dark, she uh, flies at night, she eats fruit, so that she has long wings. And so that's a pretty good uh, uh, analog lesson where the students are actually writing with pen, and pe pen or pencil. They're just filling in the blank. So this is a bubble map. Okay. So that's the assignment. Everybody understands the assignment. This is the, this is the old way of doing it. This is the traditional way of doing it. And it's a fast way. That's one of the things that people like about pen and paper assignments is that it's very fast to get going. You don't have to take kids to a computer or anything like that. But there's some advantages of doing it, even if you're just substituting. So I want to show you. Here's an example of using a website called bubble.us to make the exact same item. So you can see that um, we haven't changed the assignment at all. We go to bubble.us and the students create their own mind map and they just fill in. They start filling in uh, the, the bubbles. And so uh, you can see immediately, I hope, that there's some advantage of using technology even at the substitute level, even at the lowest level of using the SAMR model. There's some advantages. Look at this. This is a bubble map. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this bubble map. There's nothing wrong with this bubble map. But look at the exact same bubble map using bubble.us. I think that this makes it much easier to read. This makes it much easier to, uh, to grade. If I was a teacher, I'd have a much easier time grading this assignment uh, than I would that assignment. Exact same assignment, just done using technology. So this is another example of substitution. So you can see here, I put them side by side, you can see that substitution, the technology just acts like the old tool. We haven't done anything out of the way. We haven't added pictures. We haven't augmented it in any way. All we've done is we've done the exact same assignment. So remember, in the SAMR model, substitution is the lowest level of technology integration in a classroom. It's where you're just having the students do exactly the same assignment, but they're doing it using technology. So, what I'd like to ask everyone that's watching these to give us, a, give us a chance to take some of your lessons and turn them into an SAMR model. If you've got a lesson that you're not seeing how you can put technology into it, give us a holler. My, uh, my email is tbholt at episd.org and give us the assignment. Give us what the lesson is. Tell us what the assignment is, what you're asking the students to create. And let's see if we can take that and use the substitution, see if we can uh, um, use the augmentation, modification, redefinition. What can we do with that lesson to put in the SAMR model? Okay, so that substitution in our SAMR model, we're going to be in the upcoming episodes looking at augmentation, modification, and redefinition. I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode of Digital Discoveries. We'll be seeing you next time when we take a look at augmentation. Thanks for joining me.